Bulk Mineral Resources. A mineral or mineral species is broadly speaking a solid chemical compound with a fairly well-defined chemical composition and a specific crystal structure that occurs naturally in pure form. So basically, minerals are substances with a distinctive chemical and physical properties. They are also naturally occurring in organic solids. Some of the minerals needs processing like gemstone, while most of the minerals are processed like aluminum. Minerals are believed to be the key to social development. And now, let's define what is a mineral resource. A mineral resource is any concentration of these minerals with a potential economic value that can be extracted at a profit. They are non-renewable resources. They are volume of enriched in one or more useful material. Mineral resources are among the most important natural resources that determine the country's industrial and economic growth. So there are four categories of mineral resources. So first is mineral deposits. It is naturally occurring accumulations or concentrations of metals or minerals of sufficient size and concentration that might under favorable circumstances have economic value. Second, ore deposits. It is where a portion of the earth's crust from which some industrial raw materials can be extracted at a profit. Third, ore is naturally rock or sediment that contains one or more valuable minerals. The fourth is gong deposits. It is commercially worthless material that surrounds or is closely mixed with a wanted mineral in an ore deposit. of mineral resources. There are three main types of mineral resources, the metallic minerals, non-metallic minerals, and the fuel minerals. For the metallic minerals, these are racks that contain economically valuable concentration of metals. They usually occur as mineral deposits and are a great heat and electricity conductor. They are composed of one or more metallic elements. Also, metallic minerals show a metallic shine in appearance and they often associated to igneous rocks. Examples of min metallic minerals are gold, copper, and galena. Next is the fuel minerals. Fuel minerals are often associated to fossil fuels. They are hydrocarbon containing materials formed underground from the remains of dead plants and animals that humans extracted and burned to release energy for use. They are minerals that are carbonaceous fuels stripped from the earth. There are three main types of fuel minerals, the coal, natural gas, and the petroleum. They are often used for fuel and commercial. Lastly, the non-metallic minerals. Non-metallic minerals are minerals which is a special group of chemical elements from which no new products can be generated if they are melted. They also do not contain metal elements. They are industrial minerals that are geologic materials mined for their commercial value but are not fuel and are not source of metals. 
Nonmetallic minerals are minerals usually not hard and do not have shine in their appearance. They are generally often associated with sedimentary rocks. Examples are salt and clay. For the common natural resources in the Philippines, the Philippines is blessed with abundant mineral resources such as gold, copper, nickel, chromites, iron, and manganese. In the islands of Luzon and Mindanao, gold, iron, chromite, copper are mostly drawn in those islands, while manganese or and other mineral deposits can be found in many other locations in the Philippines. Minerals are all around us. It helps us to develop new technologies and are used in our everyday lives. The common use of minerals includes cars, computers, appliances, concrete roads, houses, tractors, fertilizer, electrical transmission lines, and jewelry. Now let's proceed to the mineral resource allocation. For the mineral resource allocation, there are positive and negative effects of mineral exploitation. For the positive effects, it is often a source of local employment and may contribute to local and regional economies. And of course, it contributes to the growth of our economy and creates numerous jobs. Of course, it also has a negative effects. The air, land, and water pollution, damage to vegetation, ecological disturbance, degradation of the natural landscape, radiation hazards, geological hazards, and social economic problems. Mineral extraction has severe consequences, degrades our environment, and can lead to pollution and health risks. Now let's move on to the Philippine Mineral Resource Accounts. Philippines is one of the world's richly endowed countries in terms of mineral resources. In 1994, the estimated levels of metallic and non-metallic mineral reserves stood at 7 billion metric tons and 50 billion metric tons, respectively. Copper accounted for the bulk of metallic mineral resources of about 72%, while nickel's share was estimated at 16%. So, our country is really blessed to have an abundant mineral resource that improves our economic status. Among the non-metallic minerals, limestone and marble accounted for about 39 and 29% respectively. In terms of chromite's resources, the Philippines is also one of the most endowed countries. In fact, the country's refractory chromite resource in Zambales is considered as one of the largest in the world. We can find much different mineral resources in different locations in the Philippines, such as gold, copper, iron, chromite, nickel, and manganese. Now let's move on to mineral resource management. It is a unique business concept developed to increase throughput and productivity by focusing on process alignment. It stratifies information systems, quality control, services, best practices, and also integrates tactics for strategic planning and management implementation. 
Mineral resource management, in short, can be defined as a business principle applied to all levels in the management chain. In its broadest sense, it is the translation of an ore body from a resource to an asset and then managing it as an asset. It then has a certain fiscal value governed by legal structures and undergoes depreciation. We all know the fact that mining can pollute air and drinking water. It can also harm wildlife and habitat, and it permanently scar natural landscapes. And here are some effects of mining mineral resources. The first one is destructive, dangerous, the vegetation, the facing landscape, subsidence of land, groundwater contamination, pollution, and health hazard. Public policy on mineral resources. The government should help to facilitate activities that sustain mineral supplies exploration for previously unknown mineral deposits. The government should act when market alone do not work well. Markets alone commonly do not lead to appropriate environmental protection and government therefore has responsibility to help define what environmental costs or damages are acceptable and establish standards and best practice in exchange for the benefits of mining. At the same time, in formulating environmental guidelines and regulations, government should help ensure that given objectives are pursued flexibly and cost-effectively.